Hi, welcome. I have purple on the inside, so I don't have it on the outside. Um, welcome, families, um, mostly of new families, but returning families, thank you for coming back. Um, my name is Jenna Feinberg, as Sean said. I currently have two children at Williams. I have a son, Henry, who's a senior, which I can't really believe, but he is. Um, and I have a daughter, he's an econ and uh, English major, so I can answer some questions about that. I have a daughter, Grace, who's a freshman living in Sage Hall. And so far, so good, she's having a good time, loves her entry. Um, I've been an active member of the Williams Parents Fund since Henry was a freshman. Uh, and I really encourage you to learn more about this committee. Since 1821, uh, generation, generous gifts from alumni, parents, and friends have helped to offset the gap between tuition revenues and the cost of providing a Williams education. Williams tuition and fees cover only part of the annual investment Williams makes in the education of each and every student. So gifts from generations of parents and alumni make up the difference and truly sustain Williams as a world-class liberal arts college. Personally, it's provided me with a greater insight to the goings on at school. And let's face it, when you call your kids up and the conversation goes a little lull, you can say, oh, so I heard about the Career Center. Have you been by there? And then somehow they might give you a little information. <laughs> um, anyway, so if you're interested to learn more about the Parents Fund, we, you can grab me after or contact Sean. Uh, you can find us um, on the Williams website. Um, just a couple things I wanted to highlight. Um, there's everything obviously for the schedule for the next, for today and tomorrow is in, uh, you can get on the uh, Williams website for family days. Um, right after this, there is a, a family's reception at the faculty um, house right across the way, super casual. It's from 4.30 to 5.30, so you can catch the last half hour of that if you're interested. Um, and tomorrow, we'd highly recommend if you're still in town and have the time. Um, oh, just put it on the floor. Yeah, just put it on the floor. Um, uh, if you have the time, at 11.30 uh, in, the fan, in the main stage, 62 Center for Theater and Dance, uh, Maude Mendel, President and Professor of History, as well as Marlene Sandstrom, Dean of the College, and Hale's Professor of Psychology, uh, will be speaking, so that will be great. As parents of Williams students, we know they will graduate into a remarkable alumni network. But I'm sure many of you are like me and wondering how the college helps prepare them for this transition to be alumni. I'm excited to share with you that our EFs are in great hands to an amazing center that we will learn more about today. So now I'm really excited to introduce you to our panel. Don Shellerin, director of the 68 Center for Career Exploration. Don arrived at Williams in February of 2016 and has built a dynamic program that supports all of our students of every career interest and begins in year one. That's right, your students may have already been by. This is what I'm saying, the talking point. Have you been by the Career Center? Uh, and extends through graduation. For those who pursue graduate school afterwards, he and his team have launched several new initiatives and have expanded its ability to support students, whether through paid internships or with interview clothing. In his own career, he worked in the consumer food, marketing, and advertising sectors and earned an MBA from the University of Pittsburgh's Katz Graduate School of Management and a BA in economics and a political science from Dickinson College. Prior to Williams, he was the Director of Professional and Career Development at Middlebury College. In Don's words, the mission is to empower students to explore, define, and achieve their postgraduate goals. I also have Anthony Purnell McGee, Director of Inclusive Career Exploration. Anthony arrived at Williams this past April from Bates College. As a career facilitator, his primary area of responsibilities include working with students interested in careers with social impact, supporting career needs for um, identity-based populations, and is the pre-law advisor working closely with students interested in attending law school. And Lee Sylvia, Director in Mentoring and User Experience. Lee oversees the Williams Mentorship Program, EFLINK. EFLINK is a convenient and accessible way for students and alumni to build meaningful relationships whether it a long-term mentoring relationship or brief interactions around specific topics. 
She also works with seniors on real-world transitional preparation so they can make the most of their first employment experiences. We are also joined today by three students. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Theo Quapong is a senior from Ghana, currently studying economics, French, and Africana studies. He is a co-class president for the class of 2020 and the co-president for the Spring Streeters a cappella and a massive gymnastics fan. Kennedy Long is a junior psychology major in Africana Studies concentration from Los Angeles. She is heavily involved with the Black Student Union, Sisterhoods, and is on the concerts committee for all campus events. Next year, she plans on studying abroad, focusing in Rome, focusing on cross-cultural and comparative study psych courses. And third, Ben Levy, a senior, women, gender, and sexuality studies major, a junior advisor to the class of 2021, and heavily involved in the design thinking and career education at the college. Prior to Williams, Ben served in the Navy as a submarine nuclear reactor operator from 2010 to 2016. He was stationed on the USS Maryland, where he completed multiple patrols and once performed a reactor refuel and engine room overhaul. Thank you, Ben, for your service. So with that, I will turn it over to Don. Well, Jenna, thank you so much. And Sean, and most importantly, families, thank you for bringing us your sons and daughters. It is our joy every day to work with them. So as director of the Career Center, I typically get two questions from parents. Number one, in addition to this incredible education, some of which you sampled today in the classes, Will my son or daughter get a job at the end of the day? And number two, how can I encourage them and usually encourage them from a safe distance to participate in the Career Center activities? We're going to cover both of those tonight, but I'll start with the good news. Over 90% of our graduates within six months of graduation are employed doing fellowships or doing volunteer work uh, and also graduate school. So the, the employability of a liberal arts degree has never been stronger. Obviously, the job market is, is very strong right now. Our office has been popping all fall. Second to that is when we survey our recent graduating classes, 89% of those who are employed claim they're either satisfied or highly satisfied with those activities. So that's not a random retail job. It's actually doing something with some intentionality to it. In fact, the entire program is built around intentionality. The name of our center, the 68th Center for Career Exploration, emphasizes early engagement. We inspire to work with over 80% of the first year class. We call it moment of matriculation. We have a whole program, and you'll hear a bit more about that this afternoon. I'm going to just give you a few more highlights, but primarily what you're going to hear are what career communities are. So we have organized the office into six different industry baskets, and Anthony's going to share with you what the careers with social impact community is, um, which is new and very exciting for us, the work that he's doing in that space. Secondly, we're going to talk about the entire EF alumni network. This is one of the biggest differentiators of this type of education. Your sons and daughters will have access in this lifelong annuity and membership to all things EFNIS. So you're going to get really excited when you hear from Lee about the state of our what's now EFLINK. It's, it's really um, cutting a new edge for liberal arts schools. So we're incredibly excited about that. And then, of course, we'll, we'll cut to the students. And I think that's really the most exciting part of the program. And I think you'll be as inspired as we are with their story. So in that with mine, I'm going to hand over to Anthony, and I will happily answer questions once we work through the panel. Thank you again. Thank you. So as, a, as one of the career advisors, we have established career communities at the center, and I have four career communities that will allow the students to basically um, explore the various careers and also to tap into the um, career centers to um, connect with alums who are working in that particular space. So there's a career community for law and social justice. Okay. There is one for law and social justice. The environment, there's one for law and social justice. And there's another one for the environment and sustainability. Um, there's another group for human and social services and nonprofit and social entrepreneur. These career communities allow students to um, tap into the platform 
And on these platforms, we basically post industry-related information about careers, and we also post opportunities for students to um, search for internships and fellowships within those career communities. Thank you. Okay, so as you heard, um, one of, we, uh, we have a really amazing tool um, that we just launched out of our center last year. Um, it's called eFlink. Um, and actually, let me just click through some of these here to get to it. Um, so as I'm sure many of you have heard in this room so far, you know, Williams has the oldest alumni society in the United States, if not the world. And as a result of that, um, there is just a, a large population of, of individuals that exist that really want to give back to the current student and alumni population. Um, so throughout time, you know, we had known that mentoring and connection building had been somewhat of an organic process that had, that had happened for some. Um, however, there had never been something that had existed through Williams um, in a more formal way. Um, and so we embarked upon the journey of creating eFlink. Um, as mentioned, launched last year. And, and since we've launched, um, we've just seen an overwhelming response from our student and alumni population. Um, we have just over 2,200 alumni volunteers on there and growing every day. We have about 62% of the student, uh, current student, po student population enrolled um, and activated on the system and just over 9,200 messages have been sent um, in that time frame already putting Williams pretty much at best in class among our peer set of other small liberal arts colleges um, so we've been uh, it's been really exciting to see our students and alums be able to find each other in a capacity that hadn't actually been that hadn't existed before um, in this virtual community um, so we knew, um, as I mentioned, seeing that we knew that these types of connections had, happen had been happening, we wanted to be able to provide some structure around it um, in a more centralized and formalized way. Um, so when users enroll, uh, they have the luxury of choosing the ways in which they want to participate. So be it a quick question, a uh, job shadow opportunity, so students have the option to um, uh, if alumni have opted in to host a student in their workplace for a day, um, they can actually go to um, an, uh, an alum's workplace and learn the in and outs of what they're doing um, in, with them and through the guidance of them. Um, we also have the capacity for to have discussion boards and we have groups that are both identity and industry based to allow other ways for alumni and students to find each other and connect um, on a variety of, um, in a variety of capacities. Um, so another thing that I should point out too is that when people are searching, um, they can search also in those variety of ways, be it demographic information, help topics that alumni have opted into when they've registered. So everything from a resume review to just learning about the general Williams experience to I'm thinking about majoring in this, but what could that really look like? Um, or um, searching globally. So as I mentioned, you know, we have EFs all over the world. Um, this is a current map view of where all of our alums are coming from. They're on the system. Um, so we really wanted to provide something that allowed students and alums the opportunity to connect to each other in, in this global capacity and, and really build community that might not have easily been accessible to them um, in the past. Um, and so it's something that we would definitely, we definitely encourage, as you know, Don mentioned, from the moment of matric matriculation, we are talking to students about this because it doesn't have to be the place that you need to go to when you know exactly what you want to do. In fact, we encourage the opposite. You know, it's a place to go to when you're exploring and trying to figure out some options for you. Um, so we encourage you to talk to your students about it too, um, seeing that it is quite a useful tool. Okay. Um, hi, um, can everybody hear me? Okay, great. Um, so I'm Kennedy, uh, Kennedy Long. I'm a junior psychology major, Africana Studies concentrator. Um, and so then I'm just gonna kind of talk a little bit about like how Williams has kind of prepared me for like post Williams, you know, the real world. Um, and so then like one of the ways um, like that I've 
received help uh, was through like actually one of my professors last semester. Um, she was my social psychology professor and she's actually the reason why I decided to major in psychology. Like I went to her office hours like very frequently. I was very much engaged with like the material and like what we were learning and we would just like go back and forth. She would talk to me about her research. Um, she worked for the Innocence Project. Um, like with, she was also a Williams alum by the way. Um, and so then just like our conversations, I just realized like, wow, I truly enjoy going to this class, talking with this professor. Um, her research sounds amazing. And then that just led me to like major in psychology. And then once I did, I realized how many different ways like a Williams psych degree has been used like in the world in terms of like jobs and whatnot. I didn't realize that it can just be applied to so many different industries. So at the moment I'm like been really like um, goal oriented towards like marketing and media. So like when I use Handshake, which is like the platform that students use here, I typically type in um, for like media, marketing, um, customer success, et cetera, et cetera. Like so jobs just in that field. Um, and then just to kind of finish off some things that I wish my mom was told when she came to visit my freshman year was that one, it's okay to change your major three times in two years. That's totally chill. Um, the second is, uh, the worst question you can ask is, so what do you think you're gonna do with that? Um, which is what she asked me when I thought I was gonna major in American studies. And I was just like, it's a Williams degree, I don't know. <laughs> um, like, it's okay also not to know. And then just lastly, like, I don't know, everyone kind of has their own path their own course and it just may take you a little bit longer to figure out like what you want to do where you want to go um than like others like i know people who are on the pre-med track they come in knowing they have their four years planned out i'm not one of those people like again it took me two full years to figure out what i wanted to actually major in and then once i did i just never had like a more confident or like just a better feeling going about like my like the rest of my two years like at Williams I just felt more structured and I needed those two years to develop and learn and take a variety of classes um, some of which were great some of which were I was like okay this is not my field and it just it's an experience it's a learning curve and just everyone needs to go about it at their own pace Um, hi folks, I'm Ben Leary, um, again a senior here at Williams, uh, double majoring in political science and gender studies. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about my background, um, just to kind of give context on how much of like a ground zero I was starting at with respect to career exploration. Um, I'm born and raised in rural Georgia. Um, most of my family were working class, either enlisted in the military or school teachers, those kind of jobs. Um, so a Williams education or what anybody did in the world as far as all of the fancy and far-flung places that Williams alumni go to was completely and utterly foreign to me. Um, so like, no idea. I knew that people who had college degrees could become teachers, which I did not want to be, in addition to bankers, lawyers, and doctors. And I didn't want to be a lawyer or a doctor, so I thought that I would come to Williams, be an econ major, and become a banker. <laughs> oh, oh, you too, OK. <laughs> um, that is not the case. I went to the Career Center with what I called a resume. It was not a resume. It was some bad joke of a resume. And over the, next, over the last three years, it's been a process of working with the Career Center to think about all the options that are out there and learning about all the weird and different jobs that Williams alumni can do and how little the major or what we like specifically choose to study in um, actually relates to that. I've gone from working as an intern at a bank doing project management for a software uh, transition to uh, last summer I worked at the headquarters for um, an NGO doing sustainable development in rural sub-Saharan Africa. I'm going back to neither of those places, although they were great opportunities. Um, I still dig in, don't know where I'm going to go with that. Maybe organizational development, um, I'm not really sure. But uh, to Lee's point about the first in class, as far as alumni outreach, um, there's what, 20, 30 folks who work at the Career Center, maybe 20 odd? Around there, 11, 11, okay, less than 20 or 30. Um, there's 28,000 alumni? On the flink? On the flink. 22. 20, so 22. A lot of alumni are on e -flink. And so there's that wealth of 2,200. It's more than I can talk to. <laughs> One of the biggest mistakes that students who come from like not Williams will make is um, expecting about like a 10 to 20% return on an email or an outreach when they ask somebody, hey, can I talk to you about your life? Um, 
one of my one of my friends reached out to 50 people expecting about you know five to ten ish to respond and had 48 respond to her she had to get extensions on all of her papers because she couldn't not respond to those 48 alumni who were willing to talk with her and work through all the different questions that she has i mean the resources it, it would take too long we've been here for three years i've worked for the career center as has kennedy every day and every time i come to these i find out a new resource so as far as Things to like tell that I wish somebody had told me and that I would encourage y'all um, to tell your kids is to ask for help. They don't even know that there is a resource there for the problems that they have. But if they just reach out and ask anybody for where to go, they will find the help they need. Um, just to add on to what Ben and Kennedy have said and as well as um, uh, the professionals have said. Uh, so I'm Theophil, I come from Ghana. Uh, coming to Williams was my second time in the U.S., but I wasn't really sure as to how the American educational system really worked and what your career opportuni opportunities following um, would look like. My freshman year, I was shuttling between studying economics and French and Africana studies, all of which I pursued until the end. Hopefully, I will graduate with those. Um, but I... I've also sort of like flirted with the idea of studying political science and history, um, but I ended up sort of like revolving around this, the majors I'm getting because of the of the community that the professors create and also the community that the students create. Um, some of my strongest friends have come from the various courses I study because we end up spending a lot of time together working through problem sets or writing papers together. And it was through this community that I also found my freshman summer opportunity, which was doing research with my professor um, in econ uh, in Tanzania. And that was my first time going to to Eastern Africa, even though I'm from West Africa, I hadn't been there and I wanted, it was a very good experience to sort of understand what it's like to do real world economics research f in a developing country, which is a story that is very similar to mine. Um, and how did I get that op opportunity? I was very nervous about going to talk with my professor about how to access research opportunities. I know that when I walked into the career center for the first time with my resume in hand, which was also similar to Ben's case, it was not much, uh, there was not much there, but I was, it was helped shaped by the wonderful people who are working at the career center. And then they also gave me a lot of confidence to realize that I can also walk to my professor's office and ask about a, an opportunity. So I ended up inviting my professor to what we call Lyceum dinners here, which happen monthly, uh, where a group of students invite a professor they're interested in to dinner, which is catered for by the Nutting family. Um, and you are able to sort of talk about their research interests and also express whatever interests you have. So with that opportunity, I explicitly, I explicitly told my professor that I am interested in working you, with you this summer if you have any opportunities. In the spring, I didn't have an internship in hand, much like a lot of freshmen. Um, and she asked me if I was able to work with her that summer. And Williams was able to fund me to be able to do so. Um, so I guess like be in that in that situation, being proactive and being supportive in being supported in being proactive by the Williams Career Center was a way in which I was able to harness that opportunity. And the following year in the in the summer, I ended up working at a company called Libra Group, which does. Um, which is a conglomerate, because I wanted to have a taste of what it's like to work in a corporate institution uh, after working in the field once the summer, the summer prior. And with that opportunity, I was able to realize that maybe human resources is not the, op the option for me, but I might want to try a different path where I am maybe um, interacting with people more often or even be able to work with data in a way that I hadn't before. Um, so long story short, being here and being able to access the resources that have been touched upon is super key. And sometimes people, f um, a lot of students feel like they are not worthy enough of these resources. At least for me, I felt that there's so much and I, c I cannot go and face an adult who has, their car who has many research papers to write and ask them about an opportunity and ask and give a freshman who has no coding skills, the opportunity to go ask questions and create um, various sort of like sample surveys in Tanzania. That was something I didn't feel I was 
deserving of but she was able to make me she made me realize that i i'm here for a reason and that whatever skills i have they, she was able to work with and that's that speaks to really the enormous sort of giving nature that williams professors and williams williams staff have they want students to succeed in whatever way they can and i was able to really be supported in that endeavor. Um, I have also walked into the Career Center with um, various samples of cover letters that are half-baked, and I've been helped to, to write a relatively better uh, cover letter that has really gotten me many different kinds of opportunities. Um, and post-graduation, I'll be working at a company um, in LA doing um, in, a, in a professional development program, um, helping me to learn about asset management, which I think will ultimately help me find my way back to Ghana to help build whatever, um, to be help support the financial um, sector there because there's a lot of hope and a lot of dreams that are being sort of hatched now in Ghana and I would want to be there to help support. And that opportunity was was um, brought to me through people that I talked with on campus, um, through um, through seniors who I had interacted with who have now graduated um, and through the mentorship I've received from various alumni. Uh, so in short, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of opportunities here, and it's all about finding the confidence to be able to harness that. So, so we'd love to open it up to your questions. I'm sorry, we'll do it again. <laughs> How many would do it again? Do it, do it again. Oh, I was absolutely oh. doing it again. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I'd still come to Williams. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I made some mistakes along the way that I've learned for from now, but like, I would not make those same mistakes. But, yeah. What's the, what's the first year experience for an incoming first year student? I know you have a, many programs, you have a job fair in the fall, um, but what, what's a first year family or a student experience? Yeah, so Sean's question is, what is the first year experience? And I could, we can capture that in early and often. So the old model used to be a seniors game. We'd have seniors show up and say, hey, I, I, I need to get into a graduate school. I need a job. And, and really, that was very limiting in terms of the advice uh, or the actions that a senior could take. Um, so now all this begins very early. We meet, um, we had a series of workshops with first year students. We actually, that's an open position on our staff that is being filled two weeks from now. We have an exciting new colleague coming to us that we're very excited about. But we um, really, as I mentioned earlier, attempt to meet with over 80%. These first year students participate in our career treks. That's where we take students to New York, Washington, Boston, San Francisco, uh, and meet with lots and lots of alumni. First year students participate in our How Do You Get There speaker series. So we have all types of speakers back, almost one a week. Anthony here already has uh, more than I can count that he's put together. <laughs> Um, and so, again, first years are welcome really at every aspect, job and internship fair in September. We had 60 employers back and a lot, over 300 students attended, many, many first years participated. First years are used to having done already internships, many of them in high school, and this is just a continuation of a narrative to them. So they're expecting and indeed very pleasantly surprised that we can not only help them source internships, we can fund unpaid internships. We funded 180 internships this past summer. There's many other pockets of support around campus as well. Internships are really important in this process going forward. It, it resonates directly with our name, again, career exploration. There's probably no better way than actually to go out and try. You just heard some alienier examples right there where students will go out and try things for a summer and they decide um, through an internship that they don't want to go to medical school. That, that is like the greatest intervention you, you could want, right? Uh, rather than waiting again to be a senior. So I'll end on that, but it's really extensive. All students are welcome into the center and, and first years are there in equal numbers with, with any of the other classes now. Outside of Eplink, are there any um, on-campus programs and that sort of things that first-year students should be looking out for? Putting, uh, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, can you say the question again? Yeah. Um, so outside of Eplink, um, are there any on-campus upcoming programs, fairs, or events that first-year students should have their eyes on? Yeah, sure. So I, I think that Don, here, I'll take that. I think Don gave a good overview of the, the general arc of the type of programs that we do. We, the main fair we do every year happens in the fall. 
Um, and then throughout the year, the, the sequential programs are alumni coming to campus, which I think uh, that's the how, How'd You Get There series. Um, so that's an amazing way to hear firsthand from people how they essentially got their jobs. Um, a great networking opportunity. Many students use that as opportunity also just to connect and learn from, you know, and connect with that alum specifically if they're interested in that field. Um, and then we have info sessions where employers come and talk more broadly about their specific companies. Companies. So I think, as, as Don was saying, sort of in the, this idea of the exploration process, um, those are wonderful opportunities to just sit and learn. You know, sit in here and not even, if you don't even necessarily feel like you can activate this first year, there's a lot going on, that's fine. I think even coming and just absorbing and trying to take advantage of those opportunities where you can connect with alums, hear their stories, hear from employers, hear what type of employment options you have um, is a really solid practice. How, how early on in the process does a child actually set up that internship for the following year? So a freshman right now, at what point in time does he start to get that lined up for the summer of 2020? Do you guys want to grab that? Or? Yeah. Okay, so in my experience, I found my internship, my summer opportunity in like the March of the spring semester. Um, so it was, and which is not relatively late um, in the system. I know it's a very handful of students are able to f line things up in the fall. Um, and that usually ends up being for finance opportunities. But even those are very, very small, few and far between. So I would say that it's probably, they're probably gonna ha find something in the spring because that's when most people who, are, who do hire freshmen um, are, are open their doors for applications. So that's in my experience and in my friends' experiences, somewhere between March to April, some even in May are when people really are able to say, yes, I have a summer opportunity. Also, uh, Theo mentioned about it that um, a lot of hiring, at least as far as like industries go, is very time specific. So consulting finance does their stuff like a year and a half out. So unless uh, your son was applying his junior year of high school, probably not going to be a candidate for that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of startups do their hiring very late, like maybe a month before. So that will be in April. Um, there's a lot of different um, fellowships or funded programs like the alumni sponsored internship program. CLIA right next door does community outreach. They have Sentinel fellowships, fully paid for opportunities to do um, research or work in the local community. Um, again, the, the list of different ways to get a job and the different cycles for that are very, very long. Which is one of like, the strengths of the career centers that they do know these opportunities. And so going there and trying to talk about what am I interested in, what would I like to do, what is the needs of the individual student and the career center um, can help the student figure out the answer to that question because the, the list is just it's too long. So I just want to add a comment because I don't want this to get lost. So pursuing an opportunity is relatively straightforward. Tons of resources, tons of opportunities. We have 18,000 jobs and internships that we post on our handshake system. We have vast networks of alums willing to hire students. The big challenge is figuring out what you want to do as a next move. That starts at the moment of matriculation. That goes entire four years, and that probably goes for most of our lives, actually. So this is a value chain, um, and again, why it comes back to exploration. We just want students to make more informed decisions. More things they try out, whether it's internships, externships, we're launching a job, sh our job shadowing program right now. There's all these career tracks, all these opportunities to be networked. It just, students are gonna be way more informed than decisions they make. And it's not like the old days where you just default to law school. Law school debt is real now. It is very, very expensive. We want to make sure students who go to law school are going because they want to become lawyers in the most. And you know, Anthony can speak to that from his, his own career. So we place huge emphasis on those early years, figuring things out and trying different things. This is an iterative process. We think that's really the smart way to, to invest in students. We have something called the Career Access Fund. We're giving away $70,000 this year for students to get to interviews, to buy interview attire to have lodging and food and go on job shadowing, which is really exciting. But we want first years to take advantage of that because we know if we buy a student a jacket to go on networking activities as a first year, we're going to get a multi-year annuity out of that versus why wait to their <laughs> senior before we buy that jacket for them, right? Thanks. I Also, the, the um, 
Okay, so the, the, the first question I'll be answering asked about um, the winter ship, nope, winter, winter study internships. <laughs> there there should be called actually winter ships. Um, so yeah, so the winter study internships, um, one of them is called SPEC 21. And so all of those that are um, offered are either um, by Williams alum or Williams parents. So last year I actually applied for one and I um, got it. It was uh, called Acala, it was an education startup. It was in LA. And so there I really learned about business development, which I didn't even know that like I was remotely interested in that. Business development, um, marketing, and then just dealing with a lot of like data and analytics, which I, again, I'm a psychology major. I didn't think that I would be interested in working with numbers and figuring out how to tell a story through numbers to like their business partners and whatnot. And that was actually very beneficial for me because the uh, internship I had this past summer was for a media company. And one of like, one of the main roles I, or one of like my main jobs was pulling analytics from their like um, campaigns and like reworking those numbers in order to like portray like a story back to their clients so like it was really heavily like number based and all of that um and i would not have had like that experience or that exposure if it were not for the spec 21 for the internship um and then i'm sorry what was your second question <laughs> and it was when <laughs> oh oh setting broad right right so um I'm a junior, but I'm also off cycle. So I took time off during what would have been my sophomore year. Um, yeah, so I, and then because of that, I came to um, psychology like a, it's not late, but just, I realized after going through two other possible majors that I preferred psychology. So then I'm using this year one to hang out with my friends who are seniors, like with my incoming class. And then two, to uh, take, like some psych requirements that I want to get, um, that I want to like just complete now. So I won't have to like go abroad a semester and then just take like, I don't know, four psych classes in order to like finish my degree. Oh yes, no, absolutely. Yeah, I will. Um, yeah, yes, <laughs> um, yes. And cause then that's also another thing you can petition to study abroad, like your uh, senior year for either a semester or for both semesters. It's actually really not uncommon. But one thing that the committee does ask is, are you going to finish your major requirements before you go abroad or after you like come back to campus? So like you cannot go if like they think you're not gonna be able to finish. So I think what we'll do is we're gonna stick around afterwards and we'll be happy to answer those other two questions. We have someone waiting very patiently right here. Yes. Mm. Have any of you been on career tracks? I actually have not. Oh, I please. I genuinely cannot. But I hear but which it's one? really cool. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard about this year. I haven't been to one yet, but I really want to go. I, okay. I've been on one. You've been on one? I've been on one, yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, so, as far as like exploring different career options, talking to alumni over the phone or when they come here is one way. Another way over a longer period of time is say engaging on a job on campus or maybe a win wintership. We're keeping this. We're keeping this word. Yeah, we're keeping it. Um, and then like internships for an entire summer. We only have three of those while you're here, so that's like you only have those three opportunities. The career trucks are an incredible way um, to go and walk through. Um, a business, go see on-site type stuff. So I went on the foreign affairs career trek where we started here in Williamstown and went down to New York City where we went through, among other places, the United Nations um, to walk through some alumni who were doing there along with different foundation work and then to DC working at different nonprofits doing um, NGOs focusing on like democracy, doing foreign policy advocacy work, um, the assistant secretary of defense who's an alumni. Um, being able to like just go and sit down with those folks at their place of work, tour it, uh, see a not just hear about a day in the life, but actually see what a day in the life is like. And these are open to people of all class years. I went as a junior, and it was great for me 
to realize, no, I don't want to go work for the Secretary of Defense again. I'm good. Uh, it was incredible because I got to go and like talk to those folks and realize, check, because in like the multiple or the almost infinite multiple choice test of what do I want to do with my life, you know, the first step is always cross out the answers you don't want to do and then you look at the ones that are left. And the career tech is a great way to quickly say, no, no, this one's cool. And you've already made that personal connection with an alumni to then follow up. So Ben, how expensive was this all expense paid four day trip down to Washington? I, uh, they actually give us a per diem for food, so I think I actually made money yeah, going no, on was, this trip. I'm not, sure if that's, I'm not sure if that's allowed. Am I allowed to say hope, that? hope you bought that sports coat with <laughs> yeah, that so per it's, diem. It's completely paid for, free hotels, everything is done. Um, all career all tracks. The catered food, per diem, et cetera. So, yeah, it's a great opportunity. So it happens in January right as the end of term when classes end. There's a dead week. We load in each of our career communities does career tracks. We also have one of our four winter study courses is a travel course it's, it was 14 days in san francisco last year absolutely amazing i will go on but yeah. yes Do you guys want to, have you, any of you been at the job or internship fair? So maybe you can address that and then we'll take that. Yes. Um, so I, I can't speak to numbers per se, but I do know that a fair amount of people do get um, opportunities from on-campus recruitment. Um, usually those companies tend to be um, either people who are either startups or finance companies or um companies that are in consulting um, and they I think we've had uh, over 20 companies recruit so far and we're in October we've had almost three to four weeks of just back-to-back -back interviews happening on campus and after the first rounds which happen here there is a second round that happens off-site usually in their headquarters uh, for the various companies and then offers are given out um, I, I really want to be able to put a number to it, but I'm not sure of how many people do get offers from those. But I do know that the people who, companies that recruit um, every single year on campus love Williams students and tend to recruit a higher amount, if, uh, at least four to five people per company. And if there are 20 people, 20 companies, that's about four times 20, it's 80, oh, over 80 plus people getting opportunities. Um, and 80 to 100 people, that's about a fifth of the senior class. So if I were to just put numbers to it really quickly, that's an estimate I can get you. Um, but I don't know if Don has. Yeah, so 130 unique employers come to campus, some multiple times. I think Teach for America, Peace Corps, a lot of schools come here quite a bit. That said, the majority of students, the majority of time play into our hand, which is networking. Okay, so a student may come to a Google information session here on campus. Our largest single employer of Williams alumni right now is Google. But they won't necessarily claim on a survey that they got a job through campus recruiting. It wasn't a recruiting function, it was a networking event. Or in our winter study travel course, we went to Google's headquarters in Mountain View and went to the reception downtown. Students don't perceive that as a recruiting event, it was a networking event. So it's a lot of touch points. Not a lot of industries really come here to hire in bulk. This isn't like nursing or architecture or physical therapy or something like that. This is really about students making contacts with alums and getting doors open and getting warm referrals to opportunities, getting in there and doing internships, building not only uh, skills and credibility, but a um, resume at the end of the day. So it, it's really more of a holistic process than a vocational program where it's all about campus recruiting. Oh, that's a great question. I'm, I'm going to share that with these guys in a second. But we actually did a workshop on that for introverts. And we, we, we do use the MBTI, which pulls out extroversion and introversion. It's a great topic. In fact, that's the whole brilliance. If you really look at EFLINK, it makes it so easy to send an email to a friendly face, a warm referral versus cold calling. Um, and any of you have any trepidation that you had to grow through to, to make these contacts? Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I consider myself an extrovert, but when it comes to like 
careers, I I definitely become an introvert. I'm definitely like a lot um, shyer than my other friends when it comes to like job searching opportunities. So um, personally, like what I like to do is like, I try to at least ask one question during an info session or whatever it is where I'm, I'm engaging with the alumni just so they can like see my face, hear my voice. And then afterwards, I try to just say maybe like one or two points either that they had mentioned that I thought was particularly interesting or just maybe something following up my question that I asked. And then my strength is um, like if I'm still, I feel like I still didn't form that connection is sending that follow up email just like honestly immediately like same night or next morning just so it's still fresh in their mind like okay yes that's the girl who asked that question that's the girl who said at least like two things to me afterwards and then she left you know like just so just kind of refresh their memory um because I'm just not really the type to I don't know like a hound an employer um not saying that's like a negative thing or anything that's just not my personality or who I am um so yeah that's just the process that I go about it's um a little more low key, but I feel like it's been effective in forming connections and relationships, and it doesn't really put yourself um, like out that much outside your comfort zone. Um, just to, add, to speak more specifically to EFLINK and how that um, is set up, so with EFLINK you can find various kinds of alumni in fields that you might be interested in, and when you actually start to reach out, they have drafts of possible emails that you can write and different drafts of messages it's because sometimes I personally struggle with tone so how do I express interest without also seeming brash or rude whilst also seeming very respectful of their time and those e flink blurbs are actually very helpful in being able to decipher the right tone to strike so that you're able to express your urgency or your interest whilst also being very respectful or seeming respectful um, so, so, so Thea, if you start that eFlink email with "Hey, what happens?" How, how smart is the machine learning behind eFlink? I think it, it X's it out, like <laughs> add the lines as red, it's like it flags it really yeah. quickly. Yes. It does. Yeah. Uh, to the introvert, also, um, I think one thing Theo touched on earlier was about some students feeling like not worthy of Williams or like I don't belong here, imposter syndrome, etc. Again, like never been here, very much felt that out of place for a lot of different reasons. Um, one of the, the great things about working through the Career Center as far as meeting you where you're at is, at least in my case, I was way more comfortable talking to either like seniors when I was a freshman or sophomore to work on thinking about how to ask these questions, about getting used to how like the flow of an informational interview goes, and then talking to like some recent alumni a couple of years out who like, oh, a friend of a friend, because if I'm a freshman, some of the senior and then someone that they knew. Um, and also the, when the recruiting companies come back, they always bring back recent alumni. So a lot of cases it's people that we know or have seen in the classrooms, and it allows um, students to kind of play in the kiddie pool of networking, if you will, to learn how this goes, learn how to write a good email, and then continue to step up from there. And the alumni, a lot of cases, will, in some cases, throw you into the, the deep end there. They'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure thing, here. And they'll forward you to like a managing director, and by that point, you're already there. <laughs> you don't have a choice to say no. So then you learn to start swimming in how to network. <laughs> That's how it works. <laughs> Okay, we have time for two more questions. Um. Yes, yeah. I came in after you started, so I'm sorry if you already addressed this, but um, a lot of Williams students, I assume, go to graduate school. So how do you um, interface your program with students who are thinking about graduate school, professional school, and whether that's for them, where to go, that kind of great question? I guess I could take it. <laughs> um, most of my students that I speak to about pre-law tend to take a gap two years. So what we try to do is develop a um, design a program for them to do a intentional two years gap and then they apply for law school after those two years. And we try to recommend them to explore the possibility of doing a two year gap to get some work experience because it does enhance their application for law school. And as far as to the other um, career communities in our office, so we we provide advising in the same for graduate school advising. So Anthony works with students interested in law, 
we have someone on staff that works with students interested in business. We have some, we have a pre-health advisor. So we have advisors that can be more specific in sort of coaching students through that graduate process. Um, all of our advisors are, are more than capable and, and experienced at reading personal statements. Um, so we definitely are, um, you know, are, are provide that as a service to students. Yes, I was going to add to that one. <laughs> I don't know, I just jumped in real quickly. Um, yes, I, at the front desk, I get calls from people who have graduated between a year to five years out who call back and say, oh, can I please get support to do so and so and so? And I just easily forward them to an advisor who can, yeah, yeah and fellowship offices that allow you to really access different kinds of opportunities. But I also wanted to add that, like, of course, the career center is also very helpful in um, understanding how to explore different kinds of graduate opportunities that are available for students, um, but also professors who are who have been to the various graduate schools that students are considering are also really helpful. So going to office hours is a great way of also interacting with professors and understanding what opportunities exist for students in graduate school and what specific master's program or PhD programs are they right for, particularly if these are students who have been in those professors' classes who can speak to also how the, these students particularly think. And that support in conjunction with the career center support in reading um, personal statements and also identifying what opportunities are right for the students given their experience is a good way of sort of like maximizing um, all the resources available. So for the class of 2019, that's our most recent graduating cohort, 12% of the graduates went directly to graduate school. Within five years, it's something like 50% will go. Per Anthony's comments, we think it's a really good time, great strategy to take two years off and think about that investment, because again, cost is a major driver now. Great, great question. One more question, who's gonna close us out here? Yes, all the great purple in the back there, it's excellent. Yep, no, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've given us so much information. Um, as a parent, as a freshman, what would your immediate advice be? What are we saying? Oh, so good. This? We're each going to give you a tip. How's that? Okay, I'm going to say go to our website and subscribe to the newsletter, and you'll know everything you need to know. We love parents on our newsletter. Right on the home page, scroll down to the bottom right-hand corner. Parents, get on that. Um, have your son or daughter stop by the office and visit us. We have quick questions on Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 without an appointment, or they could go on Handshake and make an appointment for 30-minute sessions. Make, an make a profile on EveLink. Um, you don't know what you don't know, and the hardest step is always the first one. Have them get in the door, either at the Career Center just to stop by with no expectation of anything, or go to office hours, talk with a professor. Just have them make that first step to reach out to somebody. Um, I would say to make a profile on Handshake. That way they can also explore the, um, the career opportunities that are on there. I, I, I approve a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I suggest doing that. Uh, a final one is to find a peer advisor. There are peer advisors at the Career Center who whose names I believe are in Handshake um, slash on the Career Center website. Um, peer advisors are a great way of understanding what opportunities are available and they can help with reviewing resumes and things of that nature. Yeah. So I'd like to thank my colleagues for participating. I'd extra like to thank students for taking time out of your busy schedules and of course, families, thank you so much.